Hi everyone, it's Kieran, and in this week's Trash to Treasure video, I'm going to show you how I create my tonics cabinets. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for lots more trash to cash and DIY projects. Now I'm really trying to up the quality of these videos but let me tell you how difficult it is to film when you live around projects. I will show you a clip of what this other side of the room looks like at the moment. Today I'm going to be working on this cabinet, I'm going to be upcycling this into a Tonix cabinet. Tonix cabinets are one of my all time best sellers. Now I normally don't pay any more than about £10 for my cabinet. A great option is to buy bathroom cabinets and remove the mirrored glass and replace it with clear glass. First I'm going to paint the inside of the cabinet. So on this piece I'm going to go for a white finish. And this is based on antique pieces which used to have a much lighter inside than outside. And to paint this I'm just using this ordinary household paint. I have left the lid open so it can go a little bit thicker and in this case I did have to apply two and a half coats. This piece did come with a shelf but I quite liked the colour of the shelf so I decided to leave that the natural wood. Now it's time to apply the textured finish to the outside of the cabinet. Now in this case I am applying slightly different paint because I didn't have enough of the white paint. But effectively what I did is I left the paint open for a couple of days so it could thicken up and then I added calcium carbonate to it. I mixed it quite loosely and left quite a few chunks and if you want a more textured finish than this then you can add little wood chippings or you can also add rock salt. When you're mixing your calcium carbonate don't mix it all the way into the paint, just mix it on the top inch of the paint and work with that. Then you want to apply it to your piece quite thickly in a stippling motion. You could also use salt wash for this as well. I'm not worried about the glass at this point, I don't bother to tape it off or anything, I will just scrape that off at the end. It's a lot easier because we're going to be applying three coats of paint to this and scraping it off just works fine. Now because this is a thicker coat it will take longer to dry so I normally leave it overnight. The calcium carbonate will help it dry solid but just be careful not to apply too much on the bottom of your cabinet where the door opens and closes because it can be difficult to open your door and you can end up with a bit of a sticky door. I also applied the texture finish over the hardware but you could remove this if you wanted to and paint the pieces separately. Once it's fully dry it's time to apply our final top colour, in this case I'm going with black. And again this is just ordinary household paint that I've left open and because we've added calcium carbonate to the base layer it normally goes on in one coat. Now because this is a corner cabinet I am going to paint the top and the bottom. Since I've had a shop space I have been painting the backs of furniture just so that as people arrive from either side of my shop space they can see that the piece is fully painted and I don't always know where I'm going to position my piece. Once the black is fully dried then it's time to distress it. Now I am going to be distressing it with my orbital sander, this is a really quick easy way to do it but you can also sand it by hand. If you're using an orbital sander be sure not to catch the glass because that can cause scratches. I'm using 120 grit sandpaper and my sander has a variable speed which means that I can make it go faster and make it go slower and in this case I'm working with a slightly slower speed so that I have more control. Because I'm working with 120 grit sandpaper and this paint is so textured it's really knocking those tops off and bringing back that white underneath. It also helps to smooth out the surface. I then bring the piece back inside and I give it a quick wipe over with a damp microfiber cloth. This just removes any of the sanding dust. You want to remove that and make sure the piece is clean and dry before you go on to the next stage otherwise when we apply our glaze you can end up with a milky film from your sanding dust which doesn't look very good. At the moment it's probably looking a little bit stark that white and black but when we apply the glaze that will tone down completely. When I'm working with a glaze I like to wear two pairs of gloves on my hands. It's very easy for the plastic to rip and for you to end up with stained fingers and getting glaze off your hands can be really really difficult. 
And often when I would go back into work after a busy weekend of projects, you could tell what type of project I'd been doing because I would very usually either have French tips where white paint had got underneath my nails and I couldn't remove it and it did look like I'd had a really professional manicure or I had really dark fingertips after glazing or painting with dark paints. So the gloves are a great way to avoid having that type of issue. Now it's very easy for you to make your own glazes at home. You can use a water-based varnish and you can mix in acrylic paints in very small amounts, part brown, part black, and that will give you a great glaze which you can apply over your piece. In this case, I'm using my own top secret glaze and I am just applying this over the piece. Those white flecks take on an instant aged appearance and also the dark black really enriches and looks like an antique ebonized finish. The glaze also acts as a sealer and a top coat so once this dries it's done. This glaze is just one of the products that I am looking to include in a new range of paints and paint finishes so if that's something that you'd be interested in be sure to let me know down in the comments below and subscribe to my channel to see lots more updates about that and to see me experiment and use my own paint range. I'll also include updates on the journey as we go forward. Now we've finished with the cabinet makeover, it's time to work on the glass. So for my tonics cabinet, I have created a graphic and I'll include a link to that down in the description box below. I measure the glass and then I work out how big I want that graphic to be and then I'll print it out. You also want to make sure that you print it out in reverse. Then I use double sided sticky tape and just apply it in a couple of areas on the paper and then I stick it to the outside of the glass. Then it's time to work on the cabinet itself and this can be a little bit awkward because the cabinet door has to be open or off whilst you're working on it. I then use a very small paintbrush. This is a triple zero paintbrush and I get them from China. I buy them on eBay and I get about 10 for about £2.50. First I'm going to paint an outline of the words and to do this I am using the enamel paint in a satin black finish. This is a modelling paint and dries quite well. Now to do this you do need to have a bit of a steady hand but the more you do it, the more practice you have, the better you'll be able to do it. And I can usually do these rather quickly now because I've done so much glass. It can really help enhance your pieces. If this isn't something that you think you can do, then you can use the design that I've included, cut it out and use it as a stencil and spray, but you're not going to get as good a finish as if you hand painted it. Once I've painted the outline, I then let it dry, and then I'm going to paint the inside of that with a gold paint. This is again an enamel paint. Now you want to make sure that the black paint is fully dry before you start to do this, otherwise the two paints can react and you can end up with the black paint lifting and the gold paint going underneath. Now I personally quite like it, it just looks antique and vintage to me, but if it's you're a bit more of a perfectionist you might want to make sure that you wait. Also make sure that you thoroughly mix the gold paint because it can become separated. These are modelling paints and they work really well for glass painting. Once the gold has fully dried, I then like to apply the black satin paint over the gold again just to seal it in. It also means that you can clean it a little bit more easily without having to worry about the gold being scratched off. Once you've painted on glass, it's not meant to be scraped or scrubbed, so it's really just a case of spot cleaning it where it's needed. To clean off the glass, I like to use a razor blade and some glass cleaner. I usually apply the glass cleaner for a moment and then I will go back and scrape with the, with the razor. And usually it will just peel off. Then it's, then it's time to pop in the shelf and it's done. Whilst I show you these last couple of clips, please do consider subscribing to my channel to follow along with my DIY projects and also to see how I progress on with launching my own paint brand. And if you'd be excited or interested in seeing my paint brand, please do let me know down in the comments below any types of products or anything like that that you are particularly interested in and I can make sure that it's on my list. 
thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Don't forget I upload every Wednesday morning and every Sunday morning.